Before I paint this, I want to strengthen up this plate here. It's only thin sheet and I could imagine this thing just wiggling around everywhere. So I've got a little bit of black bar here, you know, hot rolled. Cut it off by here. Should give me that. If I get a couple of other pieces there, I can make a couple of legs coming this way. So it supports underneath, underneath there. So cut it, cut it, cut it. And then I'm gonna put it in the shaper and just take this curve off it. Because I think when I come to weld it, because this is thin, this is thicker, um, I'll get that flat and it'll just make it easier and less chance of burning through this. That's the plan anyway, we'll see. We'll do this in the Rapido, but I just need to make sure it's square and I've checked it and it's not. So you just need to knock this a little bit this way. I have to loosen this first. Now somebody sent me a question about one of these. They'd got a Rapido Major and they've said that they can't cut at 45 degrees. Now on this one, the Rapido Manchester not major, there's a cutaway there and a cutaway over here. Can you see it? Yes, I think so, yes. Uh, there's a cutaway over here and so we can go to 45 degrees like that but we can't go to 45 degrees the other way. Now on the major, I saw some pictures which suggest you might be able to go the other way as well. I wasn't sure. It was just something I saw on the internet. But I got that question about six weeks ago, I think. And it's taken me this long to sort of catch up on that. But anyway, I'll just get this set. Yeah, I'm happy with it now, I think. Yeah, that's it. Now I need to just get it Lovely noise that, isn't it? I just need to get it square this way as well. That's it. And I can tighten these two up wherever I put the spanner. There we are. So these are half inch, half inch width width. So these two jaws just rotate within these um, backing plates, whatever they're called. These upstands, who knows what they're called. So I often check for horizontal by using a level and I just put the level on the bed and I can see the bubbles in the middle put that on there and I can see the bubbles nearly in the middle it's near enough for this actually I could do this with a hacksaw, but this will cut it straight. And the two side legs. Now you know what that block is for. Well, we're set up and ready to cut, but I've been called in for babysitting duties, so I've got to go. This vise has a gib strip in here. As you clamp it, this jaw lifts. It doesn't matter what you do here, it will always lift a bit. So I started with this parallel clamped, with these clamped on top. It doesn't matter what I do, I can't stop this jaw lifting. Yeah, it's an Abwood school's quality vise. Here's an odd job for the Rapido. So this stainless steel exhaust here is going to go in as an extra middle section to make my son's Golf Mark II quieter. Stainless steel. So we've got this brake caliper piston, which will act as a packing piece in here. And as we clamp this up, it'll bend this slightly, but it's what we need to do. And then we'll give it a go. See how this goes then. Stop. 
jammed. Okay, this isn't going to work. Well, we shouldn't have tried that really. Just being lazy. It didn't break the blade, it just jammed. Well, it's a good job we're not in a rush. We'll probably do this in two minutes on the mill, once it was set up. Thinking about it, it would be a lot more efficient to cut it lengthways. But I always like to cut against one of the fixed jaws of the vise rather than, you know, in a position where the work could slide out of the side of the vise. I cut the angled bits with the hacksaw, so I'm just smartening them up now. There we are, that should do it. So I'll drill a couple of holes in here to match those of course. I need to straighten this up a fair bit. I'll take the paint off it and I'll weld it up. I need to sort out this area here where you can see down there, look. I'm gonna make some shelves then I can put the vices on that and get all that stuff off the floor. That's the idea. The pan is held on with quarter screws, so I think 1764 for clearance. That's about 6.55 millimeters. Well, this is shaping up quite nicely. I've only tacked it here and here at the moment, but now it's in shape. I'll go around it in various places. Well, I've degreased and rubbed that down best I can. So we'll let it dry off in the house and then I'm going to prime it. Well, it's about 10 days further on from that last clip. The weather has been really quite awful. Gray, overcast, rain, cold, miserable. So this is about the first day that we can spray this. Anyway, I'm using the paint that Paragon gave me. So try and get that onto shot. So it was the color that they matched to the Herbert Junior Surface Grinder Mark II, blue-gray. Oh, and this is the brushing gray primer. I thought it would be better to try this rather than brush painting it. Oh, we've got a bit too much wind out here now. It's not wind actually, it's just the force, the pressure of the gas. Okay, we'll let that go off. It says recoat within 30 minutes or after 16 hours. I presume it will darken as it cures, dries, whatever the word is. Yeah, it's looking good. <clears throat> well, it's all sprayed up and it looks really nice. But just to pass on something that Steve at Paragon said to me, with this spray, 
you've really got to shake it lots and lots and lots to get the particles of paint properly suspended before you start to spray because the paint's quite heavy and the other thing is if you're taking any sort of break turn it upside down and blow the excess paint out otherwise the nozzle will block so it's not like just spraying your car with cellulose it's a bit different anyway i think we're done thanks for watching